Good evening, y'all. Today is day eight of 31 days of youth prayer. And um, today we're praying for the spirit of servanthood. And the scripture is Galatians 6, 9, and 10. And this is the ministry of help to others. Our scripture today is coming from Galatians chapter 6 verses 9 through 10 and we're reading from the New International Version and it says, Let's, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. So we're reading here and it says characteristics of a servant of God. And this is by Easton Swaby. Swaby. What are the different characteristics of a servant of God? Throughout the Bible, there were some, excuse me, distinct characteristics of all the servants of the Lord. They are our examples of how we as Christians should serve the Lord. To highlight some of these characteristics, I'll be using the story of Eliezer when Abraham sent him to seek a wife for his son, Isaac. You can read the story in Genesis 24. The characteristics that a servant of God should have are, number one, he is dependable and trustworthy. Genesis 24 and two, Abraham could have called Eliezer, who was the eldest servant of his household, to go and seek a wife for his son, Isaac, because he could have trusted him. Eliza was willing to serve his master in whatever capacity Abraham chose. Not only that, but he was also in charge of everything Abraham had. Can God trust you with his riches to serve his people in whatever capacity? Can he trust you too with power and influence? The Bible said that he that is faithful in little will be faithful in much. Sometimes God gives us very little, even suffer us to hungry shame and poverty just to see if we will be faithful to him he wants to know if he can depend on each one of us to serve him even when things get rough number two he is a praying person genesis 24 and 12. abraham's servant knew the power of prayer no doubt being in abraham's company for many years had taught him that god is faithful and answers prayers god wants to hear from his creation in fact man was created to have a close relationship with god the bible lets us know that god came down in the garden of eden every day to talk to adam god wants to do the same with us number three he is so earnest that he refuses to eat before attending his master's business genesis 24 and 33 eliza allowed nothing to stand in his way of accomplishing the job that was given to him are you allowing your job partner children friends the pursuit of money education stand in your way from doing the work of the lord the business of the king requires haste first samuel 21 and 8 as servants of god we should not let anything hinder us from doing the work of god true servants of the lord will always try to acknowledge and praise the lord in whatever they do if you have read these characteristics and found yourself wanting, it's not too late to make it right as you still have breath in your body. Repent and try to make it right with God. Number four, he never speaks his own name, but is always speaking about his master. That's Genesis 23 and 35. Eliza did not try to praise himself, what the Lord has done for him or the position he, he held in his master's house, but instead he directed all praise and discussion to his master. So many times we direct the praise of men unto ourselves instead of on the one who really deserved the attention. When God has used us to do his work we should always direct the praise unto god as we cannot do anything without him if you have the gift of healing you did not do the healing but god did it's his gift not yours are you a great preacher evangelist singer or music musician everything that you have and can do is because of god it is him that have given you the power and anointing to do all you do never take the credit or glory but always pass it on to god never think for one moment that it is merely you doing it but it is god also bear in mind that you know nothing unless god allows it 
allows it or give it to you. Therefore, give God glory for all you do and try to use it for his service. He gives, number five, he gives God glory, 24 and 48. Eliza acknowledged that it was God who had made his journey successful. He did not do it by himself. As I said above, always give God the glory. If you went to work and went back home safely, give God glory. In all of your accomplishment, never forget to give God praise and glory for it. Eliza in his selfless love for his master went out with one mission to win the girl for his master's son. He was not so much concerned about receiving praise, honor, or glory, or even about seeking a wife for himself, but he was determined to do the will of his master. Eliza could have stolen or cheated his master's goods and even mistreated his master's servants as he was placed in charge of not only his master goods but his servants, but he didn't. He was faithful unto the end. True servants of the Lord will always try to acknowledge and praise the Lord in whatever they do. If you have read these characteristics and found yourself wanting, it's not too late to make it right as you still have breath in your body. Repent and try to make it right with God. Amen. That is very powerful. That is very powerful. And I always say it's not about me, it's about him. All right, y'all. We have completed day eight. Um... Like I say, if I touch one person, then I'm not doing this in vain. And you know what? Even if I, if nobody listens, and it, 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 thank you, Jesus, I, I'm getting the word for myself. But my mind and my focus is on these youth, y'all. So anything you could do to help a young child, you see one of them look like they're hungry or lost, give them some direction. Make someone smile. Spread. Prayers of confession on servanthood. Marvelous and merciful God, your son modeled leadership and servanthood for us. But we confess we have elevated our desires and plans over your will for our lives and for your world. We want authority and power over others to use for our own perfect purposes. Forgive us for our half-hearted devotion and our double-minded attention to your way. Remind us you desire servants first and foremost. Enable us to serve in the name of Jesus, the one who came to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. In his name we pray, amen. And that's from the Memorial Drive Presbyterian Church. Heavenly Father, we confess that we desire many things in life, but that we are not always prepared to receive the things that you long to provide, the things that you know we need. Help us by your Holy Spirit to be prepared for your work in our lives. Let us be your servants who receive all the blessings of your household. Let us share with others the joy of working in your name. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Hear our confession as we continue our prayer in silence. And that's submitted by Alan Thompson. And the last one is, Holy God, you have shown us the ultimate example of sacrificial love in Jesus. For Jesus came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Yet we think of ourselves more highly than we ought. We don't feel the need to serve in the way that Jesus did. We consider ourselves to be above Jesus. Please give us a proper sense of humility as we confess our sins to you in silence. True time of silent reflection and confession excuse me that was submitted by Austin Hill